So Chris Christie has, uh, of course, been running for president in the Republican primary, and he's a little bit of a fish out of water because, you know, his whole campaign is based on, look, I'm a traditional Republican in the sense that I want to cut taxes for the rich, I want to deregulate, I want to do more war, I'm, you know, relatively conservative on social issues. He has all those positions, but he also leans into, I don't like Trump, I hate Trump, Trump tried to steal the election, Trump is a criminal, that's not okay, what are you doing, why do you idiots support him, this is dumb, don't do that. And like, as a result of him going after the person with the plurality of support in the Republican Party, maybe majority of support in the, in the Republican Party, his side hates him. So Chris Christie has more supporters among like resistance liberal MSNBC viewers than he does in the Republican Party. Now, having said that, um, New Hampshire, one of the early contests, is likes to fancy themselves very independent thinking state, and he's doing well in the polls in New Hampshire, relatively speaking, maybe in like third or something like that. Um... But look, he's, his days are waning here, right? It's going to get to a point where he's probably going to have to drop out. Um, but clearly he's frustrated. Maybe he thought he would have a better chance of breaking through or making a stronger run at it. Um, but he goes on Hugh Hewitt's radio show. Hugh Hewitt is <laughs> the world's worst radio host. He's moderated some of these debates. He asked the dumbest questions you've ever heard. He was like prodding the candidates about like, why isn't our Navy big enough? Gosh, golly. And he like kept pressing on that same question. Terrible. He's just a dumbass. Uh, anyway, he has on Chris Christie, and uh, this is hilarious because Christie sort of snaps at him because and thinks he's really annoying. Watch this. Have you ruled out no labels? I've said that over and over. Yeah. I know, but it's something you said on the View yesterday made me think, huh? Now, that View interview was odd, Governor. Uh, I, you know, I I thought you were kind of hedging your bet there. So it leads to this question: If it's Donald Trump, Republican nominee, against Joe Biden, Democratic nominee, who will Chris Christie vote for? At this point, I wouldn't vote for either one of them. What would you do? I'd vote down ballot. And, but then you'd abdicate? I mean, Hugh, Hugh, this is not news. I've been saying this from the beginning. I'm the guy who didn't raise my hand on the stage when they asked me if I, if you would support him if he was a convicted felon. Yeah, I know, but support... So I, I don't understand how we're in... How, I have to tell you the truth, Hugh. I, you, you have interviewed me probably a hundred times. I've never had a less substantive interview with you in my life. But it's actually the most not, substantive interview. We're down, we're this, down to the, no, the quarter stretch. This is, this is not news, Hugh. I didn't raise my hand in August. If but you that, think you're making news here, then, then you're, you're not paying attention. The premise of the question in August was, if he was a convicted felon, would you vote for him? I don't think he's going to be a convicted felon. Well, By that's the way, your opinion. I know. And so I think the, what I'm asking you is my premise. If he's not a convicted felon. All right, I don't if accept he, your premise. Uh, if, oh, come on, Governor. That's, you're on redirect here. Uh, if he is yes, the nominee. And I don't and accept not, your premise. If he's convicted on appeal, would you vote for him? If he's convicted and on appeal? Yeah. He's convicted. I wouldn't vote for him. All right. <laughs> oh, that was so uncomfortable. So look, look at where we're at now. Look at where we're at with the Republican voters and Republican media figures. He's like, well, of course you're going to vote for the guy that has 91 criminal charges, right? Right? And Christie's like, no. Look, to be fair to Christy, it would have been inconceivable. Go, go back just to freaking... 2015, 2016. Back then, Republicans were saying, if some if somebody's a, a presidential candidate or a political candidate, and they're just under FBI investigation, never mind, like not indicted, not convicted, not charged, just under FBI investigation, oh, they should be kicked off the ballot completely because they are being investigated. Because Hillary was under FBI investigation, they're like, that's it, done, over, law and order, law and order. We don't we don't want any stinking criminals running the thing. Now you have a guy who was just found liable of committing fraud in New York. Business fraud, tax fraud, insurance fraud. Uh, you know, he's going to have to pay a fine of up to $250 million and he's going to lose his business license in New York. That's who this guy is. They didn't blink. Nobody on the right was like, all right, well, I guess I'm not, I can't support a guy like this. He's clearly a con artist and a fraudster. There was evidence before that he was a fraudster. Look at Trump University. They didn't care. They don't care that time either. The 91 criminal charges, they don't care. He was caught dead to rights with top secret and classified information and storing them in a sketchy way and trying to, uh, and showing people the information that they shouldn't about nuclear submarines and things of that nature. They don't care. They don't care. They don't care about the fraudulent elector, fake elector plot that was uh, uncovered and in their own words, they said this is an illegal vote counting scheme. They don't care. They don't care. They don't care that Trump acknowledged behind the scenes, yeah, I know I lost, but then in public he's like, I won, and we're not going to accept the results of the election. They don't care. 
but it would have been inconceivable if you told Republicans, uh, the people who said, oh, law and order, law and order, back to blue. If you told those people, there's going to come a time where you support a candidate who has 91 criminal charges, was already found liable for fraud, and is almost certainly going to be convicted of a felony, they, it would have been inconceivable that they would have supported somebody like that until Trump comes along. And now the framing of the question is like, Christy, you're not going to vote for the guy just because he's got 91 criminal charges and is definitely going to be found guilty and be a convicted felon? Come on, Chris. What's wrong with you? He's framing it as like, well, of course you should vote for him. How could you not? And when Christy's like, I wouldn't vote for either one, he's like, what? What does that mean? It means he's not being a, a fucking cuck. That's what it means. It means he actually at least has principles where he thinks, no, when I say law and order, I mean it. I'm not going to vote for a convicted felon who I think is a literal threat to the country because he refuses to do a peaceful transfer of power. He refused it last time. He's already saying he's going to refuse it this next time as well. So look at where we're at. So I understand why he snapped at him. First of all, it's a dumb question. Second of all, look at your framing. Your framing is like, of course I'm going to vote for the criminal. Duh. God, if the shoe was on the other foot and it was a Democrat who had some criminal investigation or criminal charge or was found uh, guilty or liable in a civil court for fraud, they would never they would never shut up about it. They would hammer them. They would never agree to it. But since it's Trump, they're going to let it slide and they're going to support him even more. Why? Because he triggers the libs. Why? Because they're in a cult. And this is where we are. And now imagine giving Chris Christie credit simply because he has the courage of his convictions, at least to say, I don't think if you're a convicted felon, you should run the country. I, I think if you're a threat to democracy in this country, you shouldn't hold office. I mean, it's such a low bar. And I disagree with Chris Christie on like everything, man. He's wrong on taxes. He's wrong on regulations. He's wrong on foreign policy. I can't think of almost a single area where I agree with Chris Christie when it comes to policy. But he's right on the notion, the guy who's refusing to do a peaceful transfer of power, the guy who tried to steal the last election, he shouldn't hold power. And Hugh Hewitt is flabbergasted at this notion. What do you mean? You're not going to turn your brain off and be a partisan hack and just cast a vote for, for Trump? I mean, I'm obviously going to vote for the guy with 91 criminal charges who's going to be a convicted felon very soon. What if he's convicted, but he's on appeal? Are you going to bet that he's going to win? Look at this conversation that we're having. Look at this conversation. What a clown. What a clown. So anyway, uh, I wish Chris Christie had this short of a temper in every single interview he's ever done, because at least it's entertaining. All right, guys, that's the show. I love y'all very much. You know the drill. Everybody, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, click that bell icon so you get a notification every single time a video drops. If you'd like to, you can support the show on Patreon. That link's below, or you can tip on YouTube. There's a thanks button below as well. I've never had a conversation with an advertiser. You guys help fund this show from the ground up. I deeply, deeply appreciate it. Thank you to everybody who does support this show. It means the world. And that's all I got for you guys, man. I'll talk to all y'all tomorrow. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.